The mem rista was a term coined in 1971 by circuit theorist Leon Chuo as a missing nonlinear passive two-terminal electrical component relating electric charge and magnetic flux linkage. The operation of RAM devices was recently connected to the memristic concept. According to the characterizing mathematical relations, the memristor would hypothetically operate in the following way. The memristor's electrical resistance is not constant but depends on the history of current that had previously flowed through the device, i.e., its present resistance depends on how much electric charge has flowed in what direction through it in the past. The device remembers its history, the so-called non-volatility property. When the electric power supply is turned off, the memristor remembers its most recent resistance until it is turned on again. Leon Chu has more recently argued that the definition could be generalized to cover all forms of two-terminal non-volatile memory devices based on resistance switching effects. However, some experimental evidence contradicts this claim since a non-passive nano-battery effect is observable in resistance switching memory. Chua also argued that the memristor is the oldest known circuit element, with its effects predating the resistor, capacitor and inductor. In 2008, a team at HP Labs claimed to have found Chua's missing memristor based on an analysis of a thin film of titanium dioxide. The HP result was published in Nature. The memristor is currently under development by various teams including Hewlett-Packard, SK Hynix and HRL Laboratories. These devices are intended for applications in nanoelectronic memories, computer logic and neuromorphic neuromemristive computer architectures. In October 2011, the HP team announced the commercial availability of Memrista technology within 18 months, as a replacement for Flash, SSD, DRAM and SRAM. Commercial availability of new memory was more recently estimated as 2018. In March 2012, a team of researchers from HRL Laboratories and the University of Michigan announced the first functioning Memrista array built on a CMOS chip. Background in his 1971 paper, Chua extrapolated a conceptual symmetry between the nonlinear resistor, nonlinear capacitor, and nonlinear inductor. He then inferred the possibility of a memristor as another fundamental nonlinear circuit element linking magnetic flux and charge. In contrast to a linear resistor, the memristor has a dynamic relationship between current and voltage, including a memory of past voltages or currents. Other scientists had proposed dynamic memory resistors such as the memistor of Bernard Widrow, but Schuer attempted to introduce mathematical generality. Memristor resistance depends on the integral of the input applied to the terminals. Since the element remembers the amount of current that last passed through, it was tagged by Chua with the name memristor. Another way of describing a memristor is as any passive two-terminal circuit element that maintains a functional relationship between the time integral of current and the time integral of voltage. The slope of this function is called the memristance M and is similar to variable resistance. The memristor definition is based solely on the fundamental circuit variables of current and voltage and their time integrals. Just like the resistor, capacitor and inductor, unlike those three elements however, which are allowed in linear time invariant or LTI system theory, memristors of interest have a dynamic function with memory and may be described as some function of net charge. There is no such thing as a standard memristor. Instead, each device implements a particular function, wherein the integral of voltage determines the integral of current, and vice versa. A linear time invariant memristor, with a constant value for EM, is simply a conventional resistor. Manufactured devices are never purely memristors, but also exhibit some capacitance and resistance. Memristor definition and criticism. According to the original 1971 definition, the memristor was the fourth fundamental circuit element, forming a nonlinear relationship between electric charge and magnetic flux linkage. 
In 2011 Schuer argued for a broader definition that included all two-terminal non-volatile memory devices based on resistance switching. Williams argued that MRAM phase change memory and RRAM were memristor technologies. Some researchers argued that biological structures such as blood and skin fit the definition. Others argued that the memory device under development by HP Labs and other forms of RRAM were not memristors but rather part of a broader class of variable resistance systems and that a broader definition of memristor is a scientifically unjustifiable land grab that favored HP's memristor patents. In 2011, Muffles and Schroeder noted that one of the early Memristor papers included a mistaken assumption regarding ionic conduction. In 2012, Muffles and Sony discussed some fundamental issues and problems in the realization of Memristors. They indicated inadequacies in the electrochemical modeling presented in the Nature paper, the missing memristor found, because the impact of concentration polarization effects on the behavior of metal minus TO2X minus metal structures under voltage or current stress was not considered. This critique was referred to by Val Aval in 2013. Muffles and Sony furthermore noted that the dynamic state equations set up for a solely current-controlled memristor with the so-called non-volatility property would allow the violation of Landauer's principle of the minimum amount of energy required to change information states in a system. In order to exhibit the non-volatility property requires that the internal memristor or information states are separated from each other by Gibbs free energy barriers, viz. There is always a lower limit of energy requirement for changing a bit value in a binary device. This critique was adopted by Deventra and Persian in 2013. The concept of a solely current-controlled memristor provides no physical mechanism enabling such a memristor system to cope with inevitable thermal fluctuations, viz. Such a system would erratically change its state just under the influence of white current noise. Memristors whose resistance states depend solely on the current or voltage history would thus be unable to protect their memory states against unavoidable johnson nyquist noise and permanently suffer from information loss, a so-called stochastic catastrophe, viz. Such envisioned memristors cannot exist as solid-state devices in physical reality. Other researchers noted that memristor models based on the assumption of linear ionic drift do not account for asymmetry between set time and reset time and do not provide ionic mobility values consistent with experimental data. Nonlinear ionic drift models have been proposed to compensate for this deficiency. A 2014 article from researchers of RIRAM concluded that Strukov's initial basic memristor modeling equations do not reflect the actual device physics well, whereas subsequent models such as Pickett's model or Menzel's ECM model have adequate predictability but are computationally prohibitive. As of 2014, the search continues for a model that balances these issues. The article identifies Chang's and Jacobsik's models as potentially good compromises. Martin Reynolds, an electrical engineering analyst with research outfit Gartner, commented that while HP was being sloppy in calling their device a memristor, critics were being pedantic in saying it was not a memristor. In the article, The Missing Memristor Has Not Been Found, published on Scientific Reports in 2015 by Vong Air and Meng, it has been shown that the real memristor defined in 1971 is not possible without using magnetic induction. This has been illustrated by constructing a mechanical analog of the memristor and then analytically showing that the mechanical memristor cannot be constructed without using an inertial mass, as it is well known that the mechanical equivalent of an electrical inductor is mass. It proves that memristors are not possible without using magnetic induction. Thus, it can be argued that the variable resistance devices, such as the RRAMs, and the conceptual memristors may have no equivalence at all. Experimental tests for memristors 
Chua suggested experimental tests to determine if a device may properly be categorized as a memristor. The Lissajous curve in the voltage current plane is a pinched hysteresis loop when driven by any bipolar periodic voltage or current without respect to initial conditions. The area of each lobe of the pinched hysteresis loop shrinks as the frequency of the forcing signal increases. As the frequency tends to infinity, the hysteresis loop degenerates to a straight line through the origin, whose slope depends on the amplitude and shape of the forcing signal. According to Chua, all resistive switching memories including RAM, MRAM and phase change memory meet these criteria and are memristors. However, the lack of data for the Lissajous curves over a range of initial conditions or over a range of frequencies complicates assessments of this claim. Experimental evidence shows that redox-based resistance memory includes a nanobattery effect that is contrary to Chua's memristor model. This indicates that the memristor theory needs to be extended or corrected to enable accurate RAM modeling theory. The memristor was originally defined in terms of a nonlinear functional relationship between magnetic flux linkage phi m and the amount of electric charge that has flowed. The magnetic flux linkage phi m is generalized from the circuit characteristic of an inductor. It does not represent a magnetic field here. Its physical meaning is discussed below. The symbol phi m may be regarded as the integral of voltage over time. In the relationship between phi m and q, the derivative of one with respect to the other depends on the value of one or the other, and so each memristor is characterized by its memristance function describing the charge-dependent rate of change of flux with charge, substituting the flux as the time integral of the voltage and charge as the time integral of current. The more convenient form is to relate the memristor to the resistor, capacitor, and inductor. It is helpful to isolate the term M, which characterizes the device, and write it as a differential equation. The above table covers all meaningful ratios of differentials of I, Q, Phi M, and V. No device can relate I to DQ, or D Phi M to DV, because I is the derivative of Q and Phi M is the integral of V. It can be inferred from this that memristance is charge-dependent resistance. If M is a constant, then we obtain Ohm's law R equals V, I. If M is non-trivial, however, the equation is not equivalent because Q and M can vary with time. Solving for voltage as a function of time produces this equation reveals that memristance defines a linear relationship between current and voltage. As long as M does not vary with charge, non-zero current implies time-varying charge. Alternating current, however, may reveal the linear dependence in circuit operation by inducing a measurable voltage without net charge movement, as long as the maximum change in Q does not cause much change in M. Furthermore, the memristor is static if no current is applied. If I equals zero, we find V equals zero and M is constant. This is the essence of the memory effect. The power consumption characteristic recalls that of a resistor, I2R. As long as M varies little, such as under alternating current, the memristor will appear as a constant resistor. If M increases rapidly, however, current and power consumption will quickly stop. M is physically restricted to be positive for all values of Q. A negative value would mean that it would perpetually supply energy when operated with alternating current. In 2008 researchers from HP Labs introduced a model for a memristance function based on thin films of titanium dioxide. For Ron Roth the memristance function was determined to be where Roth represents the high resistance state. Ron represents the low resistance state, μv represents the mobility of dopants in the thin film, and d represents the film thickness. The HP Labs group noted that window functions were necessary to compensate for differences between experimental measurements and the memristor model due to nonlinear ionic drift and boundary effects. Operation as a switch for some memristors, applied current or voltage causes substantial change in resistance. 
Such devices may be characterized as switches by investigating the time and energy that must be spent to achieve a desired change in resistance. This assumes that the applied voltage remains constant. Solving for energy dissipation during a single switching event reveals that for a memristor to switch from run to rough in time ton to toff, the charge must change by delta Q equals Q O N minus off, substituting V equals I M, and then D Q, V equals increment Q, V for constant VTO produces the final expression. This power characteristic differs fundamentally from that of a metal oxide semiconductor transistor, which is capacitor-based. Unlike the transistor, the final state of the memristor in terms of charge does not depend on bias voltage. The type of memristor described by Williams ceases to be ideal after switching over its entire resistance range, creating hysteresis also called the hard switching regime. Another kind of switch would have a cyclic M so that each off-on event would be followed by an on-off event under constant bias. Such a device would act as a memristor under all conditions but would be less practical. Memristive systems The memristor was generalized to memristive systems in Chu's 1976 paper. Whereas a memristor has mathematically scalar state, a system has vector state. The number of state variables is independent of the number of terminals. Chua applied this model to empirically observed phenomena, including the Hodgkin-Huxley model of the axon and of thermistor at constant ambient temperature. He also described memristive systems in terms of energy storage and easily observed electrical characteristics. These characteristics might match resistive random access memory relating the theory to active areas of research. In the more general concept of an NTH order memristive system the defining equations are where U is an input signal, Y is an output signal. The vector X represents a set of N state variables describing the device, and G and F are continuous functions. For a current controlled memristive system the signal U represents the current signal I and the signal Y represents the voltage signal V. For a voltage-controlled memristive system the signal U represents the voltage signal V and the signal Y represents the current signal I. The pure memristor is a particular case of these equations, namely when X depends only on charge and since the charge is related to the current via the time derivative dQ, dT equals I. Thus for pure memristors F must be equal or proportional to the current I. Pinched hysteresis One of the resulting properties of memristors and memristive systems is the existence of a pinched hysteresis effect. For a current-controlled memristive system, the input U is the current type, the output Y is the voltage V, and the slope of the curve represents the electrical resistance. The change in slope of the pinched hysteresis curves demonstrates switching between different resistance states which is a phenomenon central to RERAM and other forms of two-terminal resistance memory. At high frequencies, memristive theory predicts the pinched hysteresis effect will degenerate resulting in a straight line representative of a linear resistor. It has been proven that some types of non-crossing pinched hysteresis curves cannot be described by memristors. Extended memristive systems Some researchers have raised the question of the scientific legitimacy of HP's memristor models in explaining their behavior of RERAM, and have suggested extended memristive models to remedy perceived deficiencies. One example attempts to extend the memristive systems framework by including dynamic systems incorporating higher-order derivatives of the input. Signal U is a series expansion where M is a positive integer, U is an input signal, Y is an output signal. The vector X represents a set of end state variables describing the device, and the functions G and F are continuous functions. This equation produces the same zero-crossing hysteresis curves as memristive systems but with a different frequency response than that predicted by memristive systems. Another example suggests including an offset value to account for an observed nanobattery effect which violates the predicted zero-crossing pinched hysteresis effect.